the amount of information that's been created from the dawn of humanity since human beings walked this planet to the year 2003, which is only, what, a decade and a half ago, that amount of information, how long does it take to create that nowadays? Two days. The amount of information is doubling at dizzying speeds, but how we learn it, how we absorb it, focus, retain it, apply it, is pretty much flatline. And that growing gap creates something called anxiety. Mm. They call it information fatigue syndrome, because everything's a syndrome, right? Higher blood pressure, compression of leisure time, more sleeplessness. Because we live in an age where, you know, electric cars and spaceships that are going to Mars, but our vehicle of choice when it comes to learning and education is like a horse and buggy. Mm -hmm. You know, like the education system has not, we all grew up with the 20th century education that prepared us for a 20th century world, which at the turn of the 20th century was working in farms and factories. And, uh, And that's what the education was. It was assembly line, cookie cutter, one size fits all. But now we live in a world where the world's changing so much. Someone graduating school today is gonna have eight to 14 different careers. Can you imagine that? Not jobs, but different careers because we don't know where the world's gonna be. So your ability to outlearn, outthink, outperform, I mean, that's your greatest advantage. If there's one skill to master in the 21st century, it's your ability to learn rapidly, Mm. to be able to keep up. So digital overload. Digital, this second digital super villain today that I think is a health threat to all, everyone listening, whether you're an entrepreneur, you're a parent, you're a high achiever, is this thing called digital distraction. Think about all the social media alerts, the app updates. I mean, our minds are being fried because we're getting these dopamine fixes all the time. Do you know how often the average person opens up Instagram? It's now 150 times. And then if you guys are opening up a less, that means somebody's opening up a whole lot more. But that's by design, mm. right? Because every like, share, comment, you get this dopamine flood and it, it drives our, you know, our, our, our habits and our addiction, if you will. And we talk a lot about routines and now we're going to talk about how to jumpstart your brain, morning routine, evening routines, because, I mean, really the success that everyone is desiring, it's hidden in our daily habits. Right. First, you create your habits and then your habits create you. But one of the things that a bad habit, the most successful people, they have their to do list and we all have our to do list. But I've also noticed that some of the highest achievers, they have a not to do list. You know what I mean? They have a list of non-negotiable things they will not indulge in because, you know, we've all read the book. Good to great. You say no to good. So you can say yes to great. Right. And a lot of times when you get more and more successful, you suffer from this opportunity stress. Right? You get more and more offers, more and more opportunity, and you can't say yes to everything. And that's a big challenge because then you have so many windows open on your computer. And even if they're minimized, they still take up energy and they take, still take up space and memory. And you wonder why you're fatigued all the time. You wonder why you don't have the mental energy to do the things that you need to be able to do. So digital distraction and on the top of your not to do list should be not checking your phone in the first thing in the morning. And I know everyone's listening to me and, and automatically so many people are just like, oh my God, you know, like I hate, you know, I hate this guy. But the first hour of the day, the reason why you don't want to pick up your phone is because, and we're all guilty of this, is because it rewires your brain for two things. Number one, it rewires your brain for distraction. When you wake up first thing in the morning, you're in this relaxed, alpha, creative, very suggestible state, right? You just woke up. And so you have to be very careful and protect and stand guard to your mind from outside influences because number one if the first thing you see on your phone you're watching these cat videos and you know everything that's going on social media you're getting these dopamine flood which is building your distraction muscles because when it comes to focus focus is is like there's a focus fitness if you will and you have focus muscles but you also have distraction muscles and a lot of people their distraction muscles are way overdeveloped because of picking the phone up first thing in the morning But the second reason for a neurological reason why you don't want to pick up your phone the first hour of the day is because it also rewires your brain for reaction. It's training your brain to be reactive. And so, you know, as you know, you you go through your phone, you wake up in the morning, you pick up your phone, you get one text, one voicemail message, one, you know, email, and all of a sudden your day is shot. Mm -hmm. Like it puts you in a bad mood and you carry that mood throughout your entire day. And that's a big challenge because... You know, if you're just fighting fires, then you're just on the defense. If you're just trying to fulfill everyone else's needs without going through like what's going to help me to win this day, to own this, you know, this day, to be able to make it the best, then um, 
then you're you're reacting. And I have, I have a friend, Brendan Burchard. He says, your inbox is nothing but a convenient organizational system for other people's agenda for your life. Mm-hmm. So you're training your brain to react and you can never have an incredible day if you're just reacting to things, right? So for me, I wake up in the morning and when I just start journaling and I write down three things I want to accomplish personally that day and three things I want to accomplish professionally. And it's different every single day, but I always begin with the end in mind. One of my favorite books of all time is this book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm -hmm. And we've read this book. Some people are like, I have that book and it's sitting on my shelf. And it becomes shelf help, not self-help, right? Because nobody's (laughs) actually like reading that book because so many people buy books. And I have the, I like to encourage people to read at least one book a week because the average person reads about two maybe three books a year. But what I love about reading, number one, is the best exercise, you know, for your mind. And, you know, it's it's like reading is to your mind what exercise is to your body. It's an incredible workout. And uh, but most people, they don't take the time to read. But the other reason I like to read um, is if somebody has decades of experience in leadership, negotiation, entrepreneurship, fitness, and they put it into a book, and you can sit down in a couple of days and read that book, you could download decades of experience into days. And that's a huge advantage, right? Because leaders leaders are readers. When I'm writing what I need to accomplish, I'm writing put first things first. Put first things first. Meaning I believe that the most important thing is to keep the most important thing the most important thing. The most important thing is to keep the most important thing the most important thing. Because a lot of people have a fear of a failure or fear of success. You know, my, my, my fear has always been I don't want to succeed at things that don't matter. It wasn't so much about failing, it's about getting really good at something that didn't make a difference. And Stephen Covey talks about it, like you're really good at climbing the ladder of success only to get to the top and realize that it's leaning on the wrong wall. Mm. And so if you begin with the end in mind, so I'm thinking about, my friend uh, Clay Bear has this phrase about uh, champagne moments. You know, in sports, it's very clear when you're popping that champagne, what has to happen, your criteria. And for me, I think about, If I'm coming back, you know, at night and somebody asked me how my day was and I was like, I crushed it today. You know, what had to happen working backwards in order for that to happen? And I think about three things professionally, three things personally. And so I write that down first thing in the morning and then I don't check my phone until I get one of those checks done. Just at least one thing, you know, and then I get some positive momentum, for example. But that's the reason you don't want to check your phone. It's training you to be distracted and it's rewiring your brain to be reactive. And you can't be successful and fulfilled if you're just giving up the sovereignty, your power to some, some something outside of yourself. The third digital, like, super villain, if you will, when we're talking about, you know, digital uh, challenges is... Um, So you have digital overload, digital distraction, is digital dementia. Have you heard this term yet? No. You're gonna hear this a lot in healthcare. It's basically where we're outsourcing our our brains, our minds to our smart devices. Oh, this is why I can't Mm -hmm. remember anybody's phone number. Exactly, I mean, how many phone numbers did you know growing up as a kid? All of them. All of them, literally all of them, because we had to, right? And how many phone numbers do you know right now? Two. But the the old (laughs) ones that don't that the ones that don't matter anymore. My wife's, yeah. Exactly. So you know, like one or two. There could be somebody you're texting or calling every single day, and if your phone was dead or if you didn't have it with you, you wouldn't honestly know what that number is. And here's the thing: I don't want to memorize 500 phone numbers. Nobody wants to do that. But we've lost the ability to remember one phone number. We've lost the ability to remember a conversation, somebody's birthday. I mean. I feel like absent-mindedness. I mean, how many people feel like senior moments are coming too early? Like you walk (laughs) into a room and you just forget why you're there. Mm -hmm. Or you open up the refrigerator. You go to the store to buy one thing and you come back with like two bags full of things, except for that one thing you went to, you know, get there, get there. Or you can't remember if you, you're in the shower, you can't remember if you shampooed your hair, your hair. And I believe two of the most costly words in life and in business are I forgot. You know, I forgot to do it. I forgot to bring it. I forgot that conversation. I forgot that meeting. I forgot what I needed to say. I forgot that name. Mm. I mean, I think number one business etiquette, networking mm. skill there is, is remembering people's names. We don't realize how much time we're spending on these devices, right? right? When you go and you actually look at the numbers, when you look at your phone and you look at like you're sp- somebody spending like 24 hours a week, you know, on, on social media or whatever it is. I mean, that's people always say, oh, I have no time to read or I have no time to work out. <laughs> it has nothing to do with with time management. It's all priority management. 